The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the April 3rd. The magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. We'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. For that, send that out to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject, and if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A bit of a mixed bag out there. That mix is coming from the Dow and the New York Stock Exchange, both trading to the upside while the others are not. The S&P is off seven and a half points. The NASDAQ 125, that's about 1%, eight tenths for the Russell, 14, 15 points. Semi's down 51, one and a half percent. Tranny's up one and seven tenths percent. That's a 253 point move. Gold is up 16 bucks right now, trading at 2002, while silver's down two pennies at 24.13. Lights Recruit is up $4.09. Natural gas is up 12 cents on a 30 year treasury, printed out at 132.09. That is up one point and four ticks. Lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. We've got Heska Corp up. 19 bucks or 20 percent united health 16 bucks three and a half percent humana 15 bucks three percent uh the oih obviously with oil being up that's up five percent 14 bucks appellus pharmaceuticals up about 11 that's a 16 percent move to the downside Ascendus Pharma down 28 percent or 38 bucks. Mercado Libre about one and a half percent, 19 dollars. Idex Labs almost three percent or 14, well, nearly 15 bucks. Equinix up 13 dollars, off 13 dollars, nearly two percent. And Tesla down six percent. That's a 13 point move to the downside. But let's begin by taking a look at what are the markets doing out here. Let's begin by taking a look at the uh, equity future contracts. What we have out here are A to B equals CD patterns. Inside the ES Mini, your one to one is going to take you up to the 40. 4171 area. Inside the NQ, we're looking at 14,003. The Dow has already hit the 1 to 1.272 area, so its next upside price target would be 34,135. There is no A to B equal CD pattern inside the Russell. It just has a buy the D point pattern that has led to a consolidation with inside its profile. So we've got breakout, 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 consolidation with regard to the daily time frame charts for the equity future contracts. Uh, everything is trading above uh, the Apogee pivot points, meaning the ES and the NQ out here. So that is a, a bullish condition. If we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator, this is where things get a little dicey. Dicey how? Well, they get a little dicey because uh, it has achieved oversold status. Did it relatively quick out there and did that by getting above plus 150. Now, the cool thing about getting above plus 150, it provides you and I with the very clear signal of the future, a future event tells us that we are going to see higher highs inside the New York Stock Exchange. Now, what it first needs to do, though, is work off that oversold condition. That's what it's doing as we speak right now. Now, it's not unusual, first of all, for 
a um, for Mondays to be Debbie Downer days out there. Did you know that? I didn't know that till this morning when I posted this chart basically inside the uh, newsletter that took a look at the S&P 500 for the last 95 years. Not that we haven't looked at this chart before, but what I did notice on there is to take a look at the lower left. Take a look at Mondays. Mondays, hangover day apparently uh, inside of the S&P 500, just simply the worst performing day. So don't get too caught up in the fact that maybe it trades a little lower today. We're in oversold condition and Mondays over 95 years are basically the worst performing day for the S&P 500. Now, if we take a look at April, first, we had a pretty decent march out here. If we take a look at April, April is the third best performing month, really almost very close to uh, uh, December out there. So what should we expect? Well, we took a look at those A to B equals CD patterns that were underway. We know that we should expect and anticipate that the market works off this oversold condition. And once that oversold condition is worked off, where do prices head to? Well, they resume their price move up to their A to B equals CD price targets. Now, a real confirmation that this is a really likely outcome would be the Russell 2000 participating in that move. And that would require close above the 1811 area that's the top of its daily profile we've got market conditions if we take a look at just simply overall market breadth out here new york stock exchange the advanced client oscillator helps us do that but if we take a look at overall market breadth for the weekly time frame the s p has just slipped slightly back into the uh, negative area this morning earlier this morning was positive only 93 trading above and 126 below but otherwise daily week the daily 240 to 60 minute time frame for the s p they are in a bullish condition nasdaq is bullish all across the board and if anything's going to move a market higher or lower it's certainly going to be the nasdaq and the semis out there so market conditions when we take a look at market breadth is also very positive out there if we look at just simply intraday what's going on underneath the covers from a 30 minute time frame we can do this here we can see we are in a bearish crossover that uh, formed as we were coming on the air at about 10 50 is when we got that crossover only 35 above and 297 below so when we go take a look at the intraday charts that's for the s p you know we'll want to focus on the uh, 30 minute time frame same thing, same kind of setup for the NASDAQ out here where you've got, to, well, I think it's the same setup. Yeah, three above, 63 below. So what you and I want to do is go take a look at those 30-minute time frame charts. Let me get those fired up here. See what kind of signal information they're providing for you and I, or at least where we can find some levels of support. So we got those popping up right now. We're going to change screens out here. Just see if there's any kind of signals, any pattern that you and I can rely upon to help us navigate through the 30-minute time frame charts. So these are still populating here. So just uh, give them a moment i've got a number of uh, tools that are running in the background you can see the td9 count top of the russell 2000 as well as the roads mentum indicator bottom if we take a look at the uh, 30 minute nq that's the upper right that had already formed a uh, roads mentum indicator top its price target could be down at 13057 we're at 13160 that's you know another 100 points to the downside so if that happens uh, that should be expected anticipated not like that would be a gigantic surprise in the case of the uh, es mini it has formed it's got a wave number seven bar it's got a roads mentum indicator bar but its level of support that it may be targeting is the current bottom of its profile, which is at 41.14. So watch 41.14. If price were to close below 41.14, you'd be looking at a move back to 40.82. And finally, in the case of the uh, Dow Equity Future Contract, it also has a Roadsman to indicator top for its 30-minute time frame. Price right now getting back or appears to be getting back inside its profile. It's 11.14. This bar doesn't close until 11.30. But uh, you do have support at 33.547. And then below that, its breakout level, which is at 33,037. So what we've got in summary, Steve-O, we've got very bullish conditions in the market. So bullish that it got to an oversold status, and that needs to be worked off. And once that gets worked off, we should see these markets resume to the upside. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive. He just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 158, S&P's off 6, NASDAQ's down 122, Russell's off 18. We're taking a look at the charts here for Alta, and this is for Monterey Mo inside the uh, Tiger's Den. So, Monterey, when we take a look at the uh, Alta charts out here, we notice that, that today is going to form bar number 8 of a TD9 count pattern out here. And uh, my studies show that 90% of the time when you do get to bar number 8, you will complete that TD9 count. That says that we should expect and anticipate to see a top form in Alta between today and Wednesday. The reason why I say between today and Wednesday is that high will form on bars eight, bars nine, or the bar following bar number nine. We also see that there is a Rhodes momentum indicator signal that has been triggered. Those are the black diagonal lines out there. Now, those require bearish reversal candles to confirm. Otherwise, it just tells you that the market is stretched out there. It just simply puts you on caution. It's kind of like the weatherman saying, take your umbrella because it might rain out there. If we look at, so, so the daily says we should see a short-term top between uh, today and Wednesday. And now that top should take us back to support. Now support here is going to be really three different areas. The first level is going to be its oscillator and change line. It's currently printed at 532. Below that is its profile levels. Now that was a bullish or bear, uh, that was a bearish structure daily profile. When a bearish structure daily profile gets taken out and there's a move, uh, 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 there's a retracement back towards it. Where price will find support, if it's only a counter trend move, in this case to the downside, price will find support at that center. And that center is 527.21. The top is 529.37. That can also be a support level out there. So those would be the support areas to be watching on a further pullback. On a weekly chart, what price did last week was it negated a TD9 count top and closed above resistance, the top of its weekly profile. You're above a green oscillator and change line. This is a very bullish setup for the weekly time frame. And on a monthly chart out there you have no topping pattern in place whatsoever march took out a bearish shooting star candle that likely i could have found an a to b equal cd to the upside that that but so it doesn't really matter it is bullish so monthly bullish weekly bullish daily says you got to expect or anticipate some kind of retracement your normal texas two-step out there that's the way that the market 
typically moves up two steps, back two steps, maybe up two or three steps out there. You know, and uh, so we can see here that uh, yes, uh, Friday was bar number two of consecutive moves higher. So it would make uh, all the sense in the world to see a pullback out here. Maybe it just lasts for one or two days out there with regard to Ulta. The 30-minute time frame chart, we'll take a look at it. We don't have many requests in, folks, so no reason for me not to do a thorough review here. But if we do take a look at the 30-minute time frame chart for Ulta, you've got that Rhodes Mintum indicator top, price consolidating with inside its profile. So on a pullback, what Ulta should do is find support in the, uh, in the 542.95 to 5 43.79. Opposite of the weekly or the daily chart, I think it was a daily chart that we looked at, this has a bullish structured daily profile out there. Now, if price did close below 542.95, you could be looking to pull back all the way to the 530.15 level out there. We don't see that in the cards, at least not just yet. Finally, and lastly, Let's go take a look at its uh, seasonal pattern out here. We've got 15 years worth of data on Alta, and Alta typically we're in the favorable seasonal period right there. That typically begins around the uh, early part of March and then typically ends in the end of May, May 29th to be exact out there. But nonetheless, still pay attention to those signals here in the favorable seasonal cycle. That really adds to the idea of what we looked at on the weekly and monthly chart and says, hey, on a daily, just expect or anticipate some type of retracement back to support that either begins today, tomorrow, or on Wednesday. So, Monterey Mo, I hope that helps you out. If you needed any additional information, let me know what that is, and I'll be happy to get that for you. Dan, inside our Tiger's Den, he goes by the, uh, the ABCD uh, acronym inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Acronym, uh, which would be the, uh, that's not that, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Somebody knows it out there, but it doesn't matter. He wants to take a look at BBAI. BBAI is trading right now at about $2.69, and BBAI, it's really two seventy four. I've got a little bit of a uh, delayed feed out here for some reason. And uh, this is a big bear AI holdings out here. So Dano, as you know, you, you didn't need me to tell you this, but this is going to complete a TD nine count top today. So even though it is taking on profile resistance up at the 257 uh, level out there, it's going to form and it's also forming a TD nine count top below its breakout a breakdown area of support at 298. So this is likely to pull back and test support. Now, support could just simply be depending on today's close could be 257. I would say more likely than not, it's more at about 205. The red oscillator and change line but you would still watch 257 on a pullback likewise you'd also look at today's high whatever that is at the moment today's high is uh, two dollars and 85 cents if price i don't know if that's going to be today's high whatever today's high is if price closes above that tomorrow well then that pattern gets negated tells you about a strong momentum move to the upside but price will still need to deal with those sellers and they're sitting at two dollars and 98 cents that's the daily time frame Weekly chart out here just shows a consolidation with inside profiles is quite a wide range, a buck twenty to six fifteen. Monthly chart, not enough time has passed for us to be able to gather enough data to uh, provide any kind of profile information. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart, you do have a stretch pattern that roads meant to indicator signal. You do have a TD nine count top that is likely to form by 12 noon. And then that would suggest at least a, a pullback. And I'd be looking at the 250, 253 area out there. So BBAI charts look really pretty good out here with the exception that you should see a, uh, uh, a top form today that should uh, take price back to uh, support. And again, that support area either being 257 and price close below that, we'd be looking at 205 as the price target area. So, Mr. A, B, C, D, thank you so much for your request out there. And I was just uh, jostling you with regard to Phil winning the Masters, although he does have something to prove out there. He was on yesterday. I still struggle when I turn on the TV. And I love golf, as most people know out there. But I just, my mind just cannot handle watching the uh, live tour. I don't like watching a... Uh, NASCAR race that's going on at the same time. I can never really figure out uh, where they're at, the players individually, and then I don't need anybody to tell me how to figure out that uh, scoreboard. I just don't have an, any interest, any interest, really, whatsoever. I do have interest in watching those guys play, but, you know, in any of it. And it was great sports weekend, was it not? I mean, how about that game Saturday? Both those games were good, but how about that FAU game? Right with uh, the seconds gone off the clock as the ball was in the air and uh, and uh, 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 San Diego State uh, pulled that game out. That was really that was really a, a great uh, that was a great game. Uh, that was if you're going to lose, 
that's a great way to lose. Although, you know, often said, show me a good loser, I'll show you a real loser. So I don't know, think that they took it that well. But they did have a nice homecoming out here uh, yesterday. In any event, uh, no other requests that I've got either by email or inside the Tiger's Den. So what do we want to do next out here? Let's go take a look at something. What's that something going to be? Let's go take a look at Light Sweet Crew. That should be a good something to take a look at. So let's um, let's get over to a set of charts and look at the multi time frames out here. So if you give me just a moment, we'll just take a look at the daily on. So we got CL. We are in the May time frame. We've got 23. The reason to show you this, we had that nice gap to the upside. Yeah, we'll look at the Tesla for you, Dan. No problem. We had that nice gap to the upside. But what that is doing is we open up the daily time frame chart here. So this will be interesting to interesting to watch. Is that price gapped up into its TD nine count breakdown area? That's at 81.04. And this is forming a TD9 count top. This pattern will complete today at TD9 count breakdown resistance. So what we should see here is we should see light sweet crude pull back to support. Now, that support level is all the way down at 72.77 out there. Of course, what we'll need to see is we'll need to see intraday charting patterns and signals out here. You've got a TD9 count top on the five hour. I don't see a whole lot of other signals out here that suggest that that top is about ready to form just yet. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. 877-927-6648 or send me an email, Steve, at TFN.com. And, of course, any ping inside the Tiger's Den. You got markets still mixed out there. Dow's up 182. S&P is off 5. NASDAQ's down 115. Russell's off 16 points. We're taking a look at the charts here for Tesla. 
It's also for Dan inside the Tiger's Den. So it's an interesting chart here, Dan, to um, to to analyze. Here's what I've identified just in a uh, in about a two minute uh, review here. So on Friday. As you probably know, uh, we got a confirmed A to B equals C to the upside. The swing point out here was from the trading day of March the 22nd. 150 million shares traded hands that day. And on Friday, you blew that away with 170 million shares. Now, that gives us a one-to-one -one price projection inside of Tesla. That should take us up to the 222.18 level. However... And this is the however, and this is why it's an interesting chart pattern to recognize. What Price also did was a close inside its swing point with lighter volume. The swing point I'm referring to is from February 16th. On February 16th, Tesla did 229 million shares. Remember, we went into it with 170 million shares. So we went into that swing point with lighter volume, and now we're back below it. So we're rejecting a swing point, at least today would appear perhaps on, well, it will be on lighter volume. We're at 84 million shares as we speak. So that's, well, I... Isn't it going to be on lighter volume? You know, and I can't say that it's going to be on lighter volume with certainty out there. Um, so we'll have to take a look at it at day's end. But if it is with lighter volume, which I suspect that will be, then that, and we're right now below its green oscillator and change line, Dan, what that says to me is that price should go target support. And that's right now at 189.51. Really, support is at 195.06, but price is trading below that level. So we have to take a look at the next area of support inside of Tesla. On a weekly chart, we just have a good old fashioned consolidation with inside its profile. We have the same setup inside the monthly time frame chart. So what do we have going on intraday or in the Texas two-step chart out there? If we take a look at the intraday, price has broken through its breakout level of 197.20. That suggests that we head lower. Head lower to where? Well, the only real areas that I have out here would be this gap from back at around March the 28th, as well as a swing point from March 28th. So those would be the areas to be watching. Uh, with regard to uh, Tesla, of course, on the daily time frame, the area to be watching is really going to be the top of that profile. And again, that's at the 189.51 level. With regard to days up, days down, if we take a look at that chart for Tesla, we had three days to the upside. What do we typically have out here? You typically get those two bar, three dar two to three bars out there. So it is not unusual to see Tesla go ahead and pull back today. However, it may have a bit more meaning with price getting up that swing point, rejecting that swing point, maybe doing it on lighter volume and says if you can't bust them up, you try to bust them to the downside. And that could take us all the way back into that 171.22 area out there. So you got to watch today's action and then see what happens if price should get back to support at that 189.51 level. So thank you so much for that request. I appreciate that. Sounds like grab the popcorn and just watch Tesla. Well, that's a possibility. You like popcorn? Um, we went to a movie theater probably about a month ago. It's called, what is it? Uh, it's in Boca. Uh, it's, like, it's just one of those big, you know, 20 or 30 screen deals out there. And I don't eat popcorn too often. Uh, my, my wife, who loves popcorn, you know, twice a day is not too much with regard to the popcorn. Um, they had it was the worst tasting butter that I've ever experienced. We said if we ever go back to that place for a movie to watch a movie, which we will over time, uh, we've got to bring our own popcorn, which is kind of a crazy thing, you know, to think about. I wonder if you have to sneak popcorn into a uh, into a movie theater out there. Uh, in any event out here, we've got a request uh, uh, to go take a look at ticker symbol DBC. So let's go take a look at DBC. Um, I don't recall what that is off of the uh, top of my head, even the bottom of my head. I don't know what DBC is, but we're going to take a look and try to figure out. That is the Invesco Commodity Index Tracking Fund out there. Now, what we really need to know, uh, Fletch, about DBC, and yeah, let me just see if I can uh, do this out here. So let's see what happens when we type in DBC. Uh, ETF, that'd probably be good. Uh, that is, uh, we want to see is DBC Holdings, right? So let's just type in DBC Holdings because this will have more of an impact on really analyzing what's going on. So Invesco DBC Tracking, DBC Holdings. So let's see what we got here. Just going to Yahoo, Equity Holdings. Where do we have? The top five holdings are uh, uh, crude oil, crude oil, gold. What's AGP and HOK? What is AGP? Those are the holdings out there. AGPXX is 21%. Oh, that's 21%. What is that? Um, you see, that, is that a, that's an index, I think. A, let me see if I can pull it up. AGPXX. Uh, yeah, they use, I would know that's so it's not AGPXX. 
that is short-term investment government instruments out there. So the largest holding as of, so it doesn't say as of when, uh, but the largest holding out here is short-term interest rate government instruments. Did you know that, Fletch? Uh, was that okay? Yeah, it came from Fletch out there, right? Um, did, did you, I, that, uh, let me see if we can find, you know, so that, that's a, that's a pretty significant impact on what's going on. You got 4% with regard to gold. You've got 5% for, uh, lights crude. Brent, you've got 5% there. Let me see if there's anything else out here. Uh, that one's not going to let me do that cause I don't have a subscription to it. So, but that's what you need to do is really try to figure out, let me just I'll pull, pull this up is really try to figure out what is inside the ETFs that you're trading out here. So this does pull it up. Well, give me the holdings and yeah, so I don't see that. All right. So let's just uh, go take a look at the charts out there, but that's really important to do is understand what is inside the actual ETF. Uh, uh uh, so that's taken. So Fletch, uh, um, yeah, so you're showing similar type things out there. In any event, so you've got crude oil makes up the most of it. So here's what we know about crude oil. So we take a look at DBC. We just take a look at Lightspeed Crude. Lightspeed Crude showed us that it was going to complete a TD9 count top today. Well, guess what? So does DBC. So we know about the overall um, uh, impact of, so you're really trading Lightspeed Crude, I'd say, for for the most part out here. Um, yeah, you've got, um, you know, you've got, uh, you know, a few other things out there. So this is suggesting that we should see a pullback to support. Now, in the case of DBC, the first level of support would be down at 2388. Below that, you'd be looking at 2358 and below that 2327. A weekly chart uh, would suggest a pullback to about 2378. The monthly chart is trading in a consolidation, but it doesn't have any momentum. It's below its green oscillator and change line. It could be targeting 2034. Now, you have a nice TD9 count bottom. That also was wave number seven. That most certainly held and took us up to create this TD9 count top. So now you got just the opposite going on out here. And DBC is suggesting to you and I that it wants lower price. Now, we would likely see that turn take place on a 30-minute chart out here. And on a 30-minute chart, much like we struggled with with regard to the um, a light speed crude. We didn't really see a, a topping pattern out here, and we don't really have that as we speak right now. Now, granted, I could probably put in a sell the D point pattern, so I do see that. But here, price is well above support areas on a 30 minute time frame. The first one being 2398 or thereabouts, and below that, 2365. So, um, what do you do if you're trading this thing? Because light speed crude, you know, that move to the upside, I think you put an adjusted stop. You just put in an adjusted stop inside what you're holding, and you wait to see how Lightspeed Crude trades, and you pay attention to the patterns, the intraday patterns out there, and that will provide you with probably the, the, uh, the direction that it is heading. So, Fletch, I hope that helped you out with regard to DBC. If you have any questions, though, let me know, and I'll be happy to try to get to that information. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the Dow up 193, S&P's up 4, NASDAQ's down 126, Russell's up uh, 12 points out there. Most of you folks know I live in uh, Palm Beach County, and uh, uh, I've got some family in town. I had a sister uh, visiting, and uh, so we took her up for dinner uh, up to uh, up in Palm Beach. And uh, so in order to do that, I've got to pass by uh, Mar-a-Lago out there. It has gotten crazy. Didn't We did not expect this, and I didn't have my – because I never really need to turn my ways on – when I'm driving down A1A out there, uh, and, and I really should have because I would have seen the gigantic traffic jam. Uh, and we had to pass it no matter what to get to really where we were going out there. But when I say it's crazy, um, they keep most of the protesters, they keep them on the uh, bridge. So they're, they're, out of our, uh, they're out of our line of sight. But we had, um, we had the, these guys, it's first time. Uh, and I go past there uh, fairly often. This is the first time I've seen uh, guys with uh, long guns all suited up uh, all around the uh, compound and they 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 extended the height of the wall um, really quickly out there. It's a so it's a really and the problem was that he there, there was a function being thrown there that night too. So it was really just a uh, I would be glad when that gets cleared out of here. In any event, uh, I thought what we'd take a look at is natural gas. I figure that's on most people's minds out there. Uh, I remember on Monday um, on Friday morning when I was doing the early show between eight and nine. I don't recall who was it that. Uh, uh, asked about it. Was it you, Fletch? Was it SNP? I just don't recall who would asked about it. And also, we started seeing it turn. And, and all day long, it kept you know wanting to pull the trigger to take a long position. But I did not. And, and the reason I did not, these are the following reasons. One, I just said, you know what? I need to wait to see what happens on the weekly chart. The daily chart had already uh, signaled that it was going to form at least a key reversal bar or appeared that it would form at least a key reversal bar. We already talked about a key reversal bar. That's when you're in a stretch condition. Well, when you have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, you're definitely in a stretch condition. You need that uh, bar to exceed the prior bars high and low. We did that on Friday. We did that fairly early on Friday. And then you need to close one tick in the opposite direction. So with regard to the daily time frame, you do have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that only gets negated with a close below Friday's low. That low is at 2.074. Uh, so if you see a close below that, natural gas is definitely not bottom. My concern about the bottom here for natural gas, 
that daily bottom out here. And I've played it twice and, and have not been successful two different times. So maybe the third time is the charm out here. But my concern was negating the TD nine count signal pattern that is that had formed back on uh, February 24th inside of natural gas. And so we closed just below that. Now, the reason I didn't take that trade, that, and it was really close to forming a bullish hammer candle. Right. So I mean, it's, it's like going to the close. Are you going to do it? Are you going to do it? It just needed to close a couple pennies higher. And it would have been an actual uh, bullish uh, hammer candle out there. And then on a weekly basis, I could have said, all right, you, you negated a TD nine count bottom, but you formed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. So we're ready to move higher. Well, we didn't do that. What we do need is a bullish reversal candle in order to in order for that to uh, unfold out here. Uh, what we have on a monthly time frame. And the other reason I did not take this trade is because price closed below the bottom of its hammer candle. Now, this is the continuous contract out there. Uh, nonetheless, it closed below the bottom of that hammer candle. The bottom of that hammer candle was at $2.25. So those were the two reasons. The weekly, the daily was already proven itself to us, but I've had the daily prove itself to us a few times with the bottoming patterns on the monthly and the weekly. So I said, just time to be, if, if we are going to move higher out here, this is weight for real proof. Uh, we had Mr. Bill ask about uh, natural gas seasonality. So let's take a look at that. Let's pull this over here. By the way, this is Alt. Did we take a look at Alt? I think we did, yeah. So let's take a look at uh, natural gas out here. We are in the favorable seasonal time period when it comes to natural gas. Let's just simply expand. Well, first you can see this. So this is just a, well, I don't know what time period that was. Here's five years. Five years says we basically should have bottomed in essence on Friday, really back in the early part of March. So there we go. We're in a very favorable seasonal for the last five years. How about the last 10 years out here? Well, last 10 years, that's pretty favorable, isn't it, Mr. Bill? How about the next, uh, how about the next, uh, or the last 15 years? Yeah. Now, if you take a look at this during the last 15 years, if there was a month that you did want to invest in natural gas, what month would that be? Just based upon the last 15 years worth of data. There's only one month, and that month would be April. So maybe Stevie's just being a bit too picky here. And really what we should do is just simply all go ahead and invest in natural gas. If we take a look at the last 25 years out there. Well, March shows a little improvement in February. But you see, March and April, I should say, but April is really. But you can also see we're in that seasonal, favorable seasonal cycle. And finally, we've got 32 years worth of data. It doesn't change much. It does say that March is typically over 32 years, a better performer than April. But in March, we've moved lower, not higher. So seasonally speaking here, Mr. Bell, we're really in the favorable seasonal cycle, but it just simply hasn't mattered and it hasn't mattered for a long period of time out there. So something else must be going on. I don't know what that something else is, but here's the deal. And the deal is this. If we get a close, we get a nice bullish reversal candle on the uh, weekly chart out there. And it may be worth taking a stab at it, at least for April. I wouldn't take a look at natural gas as being a real long, long term holding out there. But we'll take things one step at a time. As they unfold, do seasonality on natural gas, Steve? Exactly, Steve. Exactly. Seasonal. I apologize, Mr. Bill. I don't understand the the comment, but that's just me. Uh, so it's me, not you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, no other requests that I've got at this moment. Nothing by email. So a quiet day out there. Uh, what do we want to? I've got the. Uh, what do we want? What do we want to go take a look at? So we've covered. Do we cover gold? I think we covered. How much silver? I don't know what we covered. Let's just take a look at silver right now. So let's put up the silver contract. This is the uh, May contract that it is trading in. So let's go see what silver is doing um, out here. I believe silver has a TD9 count pattern, but uh, let me just make sure as these charts here uh, populate. Dow's, uh, Dow's up 198. S&P's up three right now. So it's working off those losses. What the heck happened? What did... Oh, I'm on the wrong place. Jeez, Louise, TV, wake the heck up. Sorry, just let me uh, correct this here, folks. It'll take just a moment. And then let me get to the actual chart. So I was still natural gas trying to change that, trying to change that. And it's like, Stevie, what are you doing here? Let's get back to just simply this set of charts up here. Our lights we crew. Let's put up silver. Let's take a look at that May contract. Let's see what it's doing. Let's really focus in on the daily time frame. I don't recall the pattern off the top of my head, but we're going to refresh our memories here momentarily. So the daily does not have a topping pattern. Okay, it does not. It's only in bar number seven of the TD9 count out here. So that's not an issue. It's just got that A to B equals CD pattern out here. But it does look like uh, price wants to continue to move higher. Now, this is also a key reversal bar. And so the A to B pattern, now A to B equals CD pattern looks like this. I'll just simply draw it in. Most of you can visually see it. You can easily see the A to B point out there. 
And then I'm just going to simply move this line over to where that retracement took us to. It was just simply a, a one bar retracement, but it was enough for retracement. Come on. Good Lord. Oh, it's going to the keyboard here. There we go. So now this gives us, so we can see we're at the one-to-one -one level. If you do get a key reversal bar today, that says we could see a pullback with the uh, price of 23.22 or thereabouts being a likely price target. So that's the daily time frame chart for silver. Intraday, you've got TD9 count top on the 240, Roach Mint Indicator top on the five hour, the same on the two hour, the same on the six, uh, TD9 count top now on the 60 minute chart. 30 minutes got a Roach Mint Indicator. So you've got all kinds of silver tops out here how about that pretty much across the board and a key reversal bar on the daily time frame steve rhodes with tfn and i'll try to figure out how to close out the show as soon as we get back If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So I've been trying to find you a morsel of information. You know, what is it that Stevie can leave you with at 1154 in the morning out there? And I've never done this before. The, this is uh, taking a look at the 10-minute charts to say, hey, here's what you should kind of focus on. But the 10-minute charts consistently do have Rhodes Mentum Indicator tops. There's a number of topping signals. 
uh, on the ES Mini, but some of those are the four hour and the five hour charts, and they don't really complete until 2 p.m. So I don't want to head there. So here we take a look at the ES Mini, Roads Mint Indicator top on the 10 minute chart. Watch 41, 24, 25. That's the real key level I'd say to be watching. If price closes below that, we're headed lower. There's another breakout level of support on a 10 minute time frame chart. That next level would kick in at 41.17 to blow that 41.09. So watch 41.24. Inside the NQ out here, this has a TD9 count top. That's taking price back below its first level of breakout support at 13.193. The next level is at 13.130. If price closes below 13.165 on a 10-minute basis, which is the bottom of its 10-minute profile, that would suggest that 13.130 area becomes a target. In the case of the 10-minute Dow equity future contract, also Roach Mintum indicator top, a price right now is with inside a profile. That profile support is 33.601. Watch that level. A close below that, and we should see 33.446. A close above, otherwise we're just consolidating with resistance around 33,692 and then followed by 33,723. The Russell, it's got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. Uh, it does have a hammer candle. So that's cool about that chart. If price closes below that, then what we likely have is an A to B equals CD to the down. You'll be able to draw that in. So watch the level of 1793.30. It closed below that. You likely have an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of the uh, Russell 2000. I guess lastly, what we'll do is uh, let me show you where the uh, Dow is headed to, where its price target is. So as we take a look at this, we're going to go take a look at its descending price channels out there for the weekly time frame. And that's likely where it's headed to. That's the red diagonal lines that you're looking at. You can see you have a horizontal trading range also at 34,152. That's your significant support level out here. We take a look at the uh, Dow, which has been trading really between the range of 31,530 up to 34,152. 52. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. Think or Swim is up next, and I will see you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday. I'll be back with Tom at about 3.15. Take care, folks. Thanks so much for joining us.